everybody. Jeffrey Dunning here with Safe Option Strategies. Welcome to another episode of our Moving Markets podcast. Today is Wednesday, January the 24th. The U.S. stock market has been closed for about an hour and a half at the time I'm recording this. Glad to have you back. Um, it's probably going to be kind of a short podcast compared to the last couple of days. Not quite as much to talk about without just rehashing what we've already talked about. Uh, before I switch over to some screenshots and talk a little bit about what the overall market did today, let me talk a little bit about Tesla uh, because Tesla is going to have, I think, an impact on the uh, the NASDAQ and the S&P tomorrow when the markets open. Um, we've been watching Tesla. We trade Tesla a lot here at Safe Option Strategies. So even though it did not make my list last week of the top stocks for the year, I'm still going to be doing some option trades on it and sending some option trades out to the, the members of our program. And we're still going to be very active in Tesla. It's just not a stock that I would buy into and own right now or be bullish on in, in the sense of a uh, um, a spread trade or, or some type of option trade on it. But Tesla reported their earnings uh, at right after the bell today, and they, they disappointed. They, they came in uh, lower than the expected earnings per share. Uh, earnings per share expectation by analysts was um, 74 cents. They came in at 71. That's not a huge miss, but it's still a miss, and people don't like a miss on Wall Street. Uh, they I think their revenue projection... I'm forgetting the exact number, 26.6 or 24.6. They came in, I think it was 26.6 and they came in at 26.17. So they, they missed on revenue as well. More important than either of those things, uh, Tesla warned their investors in the conference call that they they were not going to have the same growth rate in vehicle sales in 2024 that they experienced in 2023. Um, some of that has to do with trying to transition and launch into their next generation. Some of that has to do with delivery numbers for the, the Tesla Cybertruck. Uh, they, they anticipate um, producing, I think, 150,000 of those on the year. I think, I think they have that many or more orders. And so on the one hand, you could say it's good that they have all those orders, but don't have, um, you know, that they're trying to build up their capacity to be able to do them. I think that's better stress to have than not having the orders and having the room to make them and the capacity to make them. But uh, they're going to struggle. They're in, in aftermarket trading. They're down around $200 a share. I'm not going to be surprised if, if Tesla over the next month or two uh, drops as low as uh, 100 and $80, $170 a share. Uh, I don't think that's out of the question for them. And they could go even lower than that. The, that company's under a little bit of pressure. I don't worry about Tesla going away. I don't worry about the long-term uh, stability of Tesla. That They're still, by by leaps and bounds, they are still ahead of the game in the EV market. They, they Their technology is better. Their capacity to build and deliver is better. Tesla's not going anywhere, but the stock's going to be under pressure for a little while. And I'm going to be anxious to get back in and do something more bullish when they uh, when I feel like they've reached a bottom and are rebounding and moving back up. But for right now, I wouldn't I wouldn't go near them in terms of stock ownership, at least for right now. Uh, if you're going to play options on it, play it either very non-directional or play it slightly to the bearish side. But uh, Tesla looking at being down three and a half percent or more at the opening bell tomorrow morning, and that on top of a slide that they've already had. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over now to my screen sharing and be back on the camera to wrap the presentation up. All right, so as you can see, the uh, the Dow Jones had an off day today. The market, uh, they started to the upside this morning when the market opened. Dow was up as much as 140 to 150 points. And then they began a fairly steady sell-off during the day. Uh, the, the culprits, if you want to call it that, for the Dow Jones Industrial Average were um, more hangover from 3M based on their report uh, from yesterday morning. Um, Amgen had a rough day. Home Depot had another rough day. Honeywell had a rough day. Uh, from a percentage standpoint, it, it was it was uh, 3M, uh, Verizon, Coke, uh, Coca-Cola, um, Honeywell, Amgen. Uh, Walmart had a rough day today. Walmart sold off $2.30 a share today, down almost 1.5%. Uh, the only bright spots, quite honestly, for the um, Dow today, uh, Chevron 
Uh, Boeing had a rebound from all the sell-off it's been experiencing, but it's down a little bit after market. Uh, Microsoft and JP Morgan had good days today. Those were kind of the those were kind of the leaders in the Dow, but not enough to keep them from being down about a hundred points. Um, S and P managed to be up a tiny bit today, uh, fifth straight day that it, that it closes higher. Uh, and the NASDAQ had a decent day. It was up a lot higher than that. NASDAQ was up 150 points early in trading today. And then it just couldn't, it couldn't hang on to a lot of that. It, it, it did well, but not fantastic. Um, Meta was up today. Microsoft was up today. Micron was up today. NVIDIA had a fantastic day today. Uh, if you're trading NVIDIA, you're loving life because that had a fantastic day. And AMD had a fantastic day today. So those are those are some companies that really helped the NASDAQ trade to the upside. Nothing has changed a lot in the terms of what we're looking for the rest of the week. As a reminder, you've got um, tomorrow, let's see, tomorrow before the market opens, you've got um, American Airlines, Humana, Blackstone, Southwest Airlines, Alaska Airlines, Valero, they are all reporting before the market opens tomorrow morning. I don't think any of those reports by themselves are going to be market movers as much as the GDP report that comes in tomorrow morning. We've mentioned that a couple of times. I don't need to, you can go back and listen to previous episodes if you want to hear my commentary on why you've got to pay attention to this GDP report tomorrow. And don't, we haven't talked much about it in the last few days, but don't discount the durable goods orders. Uh, durable goods is a big thing as well. And, and if you look at, at where it was last month and where it's expected to be this month, even if it comes in at analyst expectations, that's a big drop from one month to the next. So durable goods orders could be a good thing. And there are analysts predicting it as low as 3.8% to the negative. Um, that, that could be, you know, for a day, no more than a day or two, that could be a market mover. But the biggest thing to watch for is going to be on Friday morning when we get this, uh, PCE report. A, a lot of people think of this as the Fed's primary inflation index. They think this is, this is the number the Fed looks at more than anything else. And what they're really looking for is that the Fed is looking for this number, the core PCE to get down to 2% uh, is kind of their target range. And it's still a little bit above that. Last month, it was at 3.2. The expectation is three points. I'm not going to be shocked in any way, shape or form if that comes in a tiny bit higher than that. Uh, in fact, I think it, I think it'll actually go up a little bit instead of down a little bit. So we'll, we'll see when we get there, but that's going to be a big deal. And that's really going to affect how the market trades on Friday. Uh, it's been a nice run to start the year. I, I'm not expecting it to last. My, my expectation, in spite of the fact that the S&P 500 has had some record-breaking closes, in spite of the fact that, that we started to tip a little bit down right at the beginning of this new calendar year, but then very quickly rebounded and have had two and a half weeks of a very nice upward movement, in spite of that little rally, I am still thinking that by the end of first quarter, midway through second quarter at the latest, this is what our market is going to look more like. I, I think we're going to look back and see this little run as some optimism for uh, rate cuts, uh, some early mixed new earnings, you know, news, uh, some good news coming out of tech that's helped you know, bolster this along. And I think you're going to start to get a little bit of a tip over. And I think by the time we get to the end of March, maybe uh, I would say no later than maybe the end of April, I, I think you're probably going to be down in this range on the S&P. That's, that's still my prediction. I'm not, uh, I haven't changed because of this little recent rally, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I, this is a short presentation this morning because there's a, not a lot more than that to talk about. I could get off on a political rant. I do that sometimes, not going to do it today. Uh, we might have a little bit more to talk about tomorrow, especially with those GDP numbers. Um, but as short as this might have been today, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up right there. Just watch, pay attention to the next couple of earnings days and pay attention to that uh, GDP report on uh, tomorrow morning and the, uh, the PCE report on Friday morning. Those are, I think those between those two, that's really going to tell us whether there's anything left in this rally going into next week and the end of the month, or whether we could see a quick fizzle by next week, Wednesday, and be back 
at where we started or a little bit below before we actually end the month on January. I would not be surprised by that. You should not be either. All right, um, that's where I'm going to wrap up. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening. Have a great uh, Thursday tomorrow. Bye. I know it was kind of a short episode, but that wraps up another episode of Moving Markets here at Safe Option Strategies. Uh, make sure you check us out at sostrades.com. Uh, never forget, I'm going to remind you of this every time I do this presentation. Our paying members get trades sent to them every single week uh, with the Tesla's earnings report and the way it's probably going to be down 3 to 4% tomorrow morning. We've got another one of our spread trades that's going to that's gonna pop. It's a non-directional trade. It was set up to take advantage of movement either direction on Tesla at earnings. Members of the program are going to see a, a 15 plus percent gain on that trade tomorrow morning. It's only been open a couple of weeks. It's indicative of a lot of the trades that we do here at Safe Option Strategies. So make sure you go to sostrades.com, check out some of our membership packages, check out some of the choices you have to participate and be a part of, of what we do as far as sending trades out to people. Uh, make sure you, you uh, subscribe on YouTube or, or send in a comment. Uh, or, or like or follow us if you're, if you're looking at this video on some other format and uh, at least be a part of these daily market recaps every day. We don't charge anything for that and we're going to try and continue to give you some good insight into what's going on in the stock market, why it will affect you and how it will affect you and how you can be better prepared for it. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.